Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers, and I'm looking this morning at a book from Bloomsbury Professional. It's one of their legal books, and it's called The Protest Handbook. It's this book here. You can see the front cover. A lot of detail on the back, mentioning a few of the important cases. That's the spine itself. The book is set out in a standard way, with paragraph numbering at the sides, which is extremely helpful. And there are a number of other factors that I think are worth bearing in mind. Very useful index at the back. And at the front, a lot of case law. Now, this is an interesting book because of the timing of it as much as anything else. It's dealing, of course, with civil liberties, which is really part and parcel of the issue. Don't be too misled by the title, because obviously the protest handbook is obviously the law relating to protests and how far one can go. It's written by a number of people, Tom Wainwright, Anna Morris, Catherine Craig and Owen Greenhall. Now we've given it a title, which I think is quite uh, a useful one, both on the web and in the journals, of The Essential Guide for All Who Support Protests and Protesters, with an accompanying online updating service, which is again something, again, I think which is very helpful to keep you up to date with what is a fairly moving um, subject in terms of its uh, case law and everything else. This is what we say about the book. The authors are three barristers and a solicitor, all committed to protecting and upholding the rights of protesters. The result of their efforts is this clear and accessible guide to protest law. And it's the only handbook we know which is available uh, to cover protest law in both the civil and the criminal aspects. It's been recently published, as I've indicated, by Bloomsbury, and the book examines and focuses upon the rights of protesters under the European Convention on Human Rights, which, as uh, Shami Chakrabarti, uh, together with James Welsh, from, uh, James Welsh from Liberty, point out in the Ford, has established a positive right to protest for the first time in the UK, specifically under Article 10, that's freedom of expression, and Article 11, freedom of assembly. And it's a sobering thought, we think, that previous protests throughout history, at least in a Western context, have not had a Human Rights Act as such to protect their activities or their rights. And the slave army, for instance, of Spartacus in ancient Rome was defeated with each of the several thousand survivors eventually crucified. The Peasants' Revolt in 1381 was quashed and its leader, including um, Watt Tyler, subsequently executed. And as an example of the voice of the lone protester in the wilderness, we recall the story of one William Prynne, a barrister of Lincoln's Inn, who roughly around the 1640s wrote a series of pamphlets protesting against the excesses of Charles I. Mr Prynne was a Puritan. For his efforts, he endured the dismemberment of his ears, followed by the branding of both cheeks with S.L. for seditious libeller. It didn't stop him, though. He carried on pamphleteering, even though he was locked in the tower. Now, closer to our own time, there have been any number of protests, from the Chartists to the Suffragettes, and to more than 20 years of civil rights movement um, campaigning in the U.S., and, of course, the anti-Vietnam protests. And we've also had things like the Arab Spring just very recently. Your rights here are outlined in this what is a scholastic and eminently readable handbook. And it's very accessible, I think, too. They are protected, of course, as rights, at least in law, although in reality the actual risks faced by protesters still remain very real, with them often ending up being arrested and or in court. At the moment, what might be termed the law of protest remains a niche area. Now, in appro approximately 500 pages of, of uh, the book, there's a very useful content section at the front, it offers a wide range of research resources as well. There is, as I say, statutes, case law mentioned, plus five useful appendices. And there's the updating service, which I uh, mentioned earlier online, when you actually get the book. That certainly should help you with the way in which the law is, is evolving at the moment. I'd like to thank Bloomsbury and the authors for this work. I think it's a very useful one, for any, certainly for any member of the bar, because we still have the cab rank principle, and we will take any cases as they come along, because people do need representation. So thank you to all concerned for a very useful handbook. Bye-bye.